Hello everyone, this is Jaren from MarinaReef.com. Today as things are starting to get a little bit cooler and we're approaching winter, we decided to do a video on aquarium heaters. I want to help you guys as far as choosing the right heater for your aquarium and deciding whether or not you need a heater, as well as some tips to make sure your heater keeps working and doesn't wind up failing, unfortunately, like sometimes they do. So first off, why would you need a heater? Well, your aquarium needs to be at the proper temperature for the animals you're keeping. For most of us, that's going to be 78 degrees for saltwater aquariums that are tropical. It's going to be 80 degrees for freshwater aquariums that are tropical. And then if you have cold water fish, you can go a bit cooler. These fish are more rare. Um, it's very common for cold water saltwater fish to be kept around 70 degrees and cold water freshwater fish to be kept even 68 to 65 very cool temperatures. But because most of us have warm water tropical fish, we typically aim for that in 78 for salt water and 80 degrees for fresh water. Now if you live in an area like we do, um, where we're in Arizona, it's quite possible that you could not need a heater. Your tank could naturally stay at that temperature range without any problems at all. And in that case, there's no reason you should buy a heater. It just would serve no purpose. But if you like to keep your house extra cool or in the winter you never turn the heat on or if you're in a climate that's substantially colder there's a good chance that you are going to need a heater to maintain that temperature year-round at the acceptable range. Before you buy the heater it's best to first get a thermometer and check the temperature to make sure you know what's actually going on. I recommend the Coralive digital thermometers. I find them to be one of the easiest to read though there's all kinds of other um, thermometers, whether they're the analog thermometers that we're all familiar with, as well as a few other sticking on thermometers that like from Rio, they can help you on out. The Coral Life is my personal favorite. Once you put that thermometer in the tank and get a temperature reading, that can inform you as to whether or not you need to add a heater to your tank. When it comes to selecting the right heater, the first question is how big of a heater do you need? Now all of the heater manufacturers put different um, aquarium ratings on their heaters themselves and a wattage rating. The key thing to keep in mind is the aquarium rating is what the manufacturer believes, but the wattage rating is the best way to compare the different heaters. In general, we recommend about three to five watts of heater um, per gallon of aquarium. So a 50 gallon aquarium would typically use about a 150 watt heater to a 250 watt heater, and those will do a good job. You can make your decision on how big of a heater you need based upon the fact of just where your normal climate and how much of a temperature increase you need. Here in Arizona, I typically don't go bigger than three watts of heater per gallon. I just don't need more heater than that. But if you're in a very cold climate, it may make a lot more sense to go to that five watts of heater per gallon. Another thing to emphasize is that more is not better. There's no benefit to going with a 1,000 watt heater in that 50 gallon tank. And there's a few reasons behind that. The biggest being that the heater is going to turn on and off continually. So if you have that large heater in that tank, it's going to turn on and off many, many more times as it quickly heats up the tank and then quickly heats it up again once it cools. And it can actually wear out the heater and cause it to last um, less time. And ultimately, worn out heaters can often fail. So we don't want to overwork it. Get the proper sized heater. Don't go too big. Don't go too small, and if anything, I'd err on too small over too big, because those temperature increases will be more gradual, and you won't have so many on-off cycles on that heater. Another thing to mention is that a great idea is to use multiple heaters to reach that wattage. So if I use two 100-watt heaters in that 50-gallon tank versus a 150 or 200-watt, it's really good because heaters are known for sometimes failing, which is something we'll discuss later. So with two heaters, if one heater fails, it's not as big of a problem as if one ginormous heater fails on and winds up heating the tank up too hot. So you definitely can use multiple heaters to achieve that goal of warming your tank. Next, we're gonna go over the different materials that heaters are made out of, followed by the different kinds of temperature control that heaters use. After you've selected the correct wattage and size of heater that you need, the next point is going to decide what kind of material you want your heater to be made out of. This heater here is an Awasa heater, and it's what most people think of when they see an aquarium heater. This is a um, glass heater made of a glass body. Years ago, these glass heaters had a bad reputation for breaking, but a lot of the modern ones have become much, much more durable. The glass is like a Pyrex glass. It's much harder than just a regular glass. 
and this is what I personally use in most situations. These are also very, very affordable and they work pretty well. That's why they've stayed around for as long as they have. If you don't want to go with glass because you want something heavier duty, you're more afraid of things breaking, you have a big fist that bang into things, or you don't have a sump you can put the heater in, you may consider a heater made of plastic, like this cobalt heater here. Cobalt in particular touts these plastic heaters as extra durable. I've seen many tests where they show videos of people dropping them repeatedly. Um, they are a little bit more durable than glass. They're more shatter resistant, even though that's a very heavy duty glass, they are heavier duty. What's also nice about the, the black plastic here is it's gonna blend into black backgrounds very well, and they can make the heater thin and elongate, which means it'll fit into spaces that other heaters can't. So that's just one of the advantages of going with a plastic bodied heater. And the last heater we'll talk about is gonna be a titanium heater. This is a JBJ one here. Uh, titanium heaters are generally the most durable heaters you're gonna find. They are metal, but because they're titanium, they're not going to rust in seawater, they're going to keep their shape, and um, they have very, very heavy duty build. This is ultimately, if you're very concerned with large fish breaking things or you dropping something, titanium is probably the most durable material. This titanium heater has a cover over it to prevent even further fish leaning up against the heater and burning themselves. So the cover is plastic, but the rod inside is titanium, and these work very, very well. Um, a lot of these titanium heaters will come bare and they need to be plugged into a separate controller. Um, the JBJ one includes that controller with it, but they very often don't have the temperature control built in like some of the glass or plastic heaters are going to. With that, we're going to follow up and talk about how the temperature is controlled and the different heater types. Once you've selected the material that you're looking for, another thing to consider is how the thermostat in the heater works. So heaters are not constantly on. Heaters have a thermostat built into the heater themselves that responds to the temperature outside so that the heater either turns on and heats up the water or it turns off and lets the water slowly cool down. This is very important because if the heater is left on, it will wind up heating the tank up too much and that can lead to killing some fish. So making sure you have a very reliable thermostat is very important when you select a heater. Heaters like this Owasa use a mechanical thermostat. Actually, the way the thermostat works inside this heater is two metal contact points, and based on the temperature outside, those points bend. And if they bend together, they complete the circuit and the heater turns on. Once it's hot, they bend more and they separate, the heater turns off. Many people feel that this is one of the most reliable ways of running a heater, particularly because there's no electronic components that can fail. It's purely mechanical. And because of that, it gives a lot of people some confidence that it's gonna work. But there are some disadvantages to that. First off, with that mechanical design, it's not very accurate or precise. Those pieces of metal bend and they don't exactly bend at exactly the same point every single time. So it's very common with heaters like this that if you were to set the thermostat on the heater to 80, you may find it'll keep the tank at 82. You then just have to go over it, change it to 78, and that will keep the tank at 80. Um, you just have to know there's some inherent variability in there. Same thing with um, the window, as far as how long it takes for the heater to turn on and turn off. Because those metal pieces do a little bit of their own thing and bend inside, the heater is say not going to turn on as soon as the temperature drops to um, 79.5 and then heat it up to exactly 80. Maybe one time it goes down to 78 and turns on, one time it goes to 79 and turns on. Just a wider window, but a lot of people do feel it's very reliable as far as lasting a long time and not failing. If you're wanting something that's more precise and turns on consistently every single time at the same time, a digital thermostat like the one built into this Cobalt can be very helpful. These digital thermostats actually have a computer chip built into the heater itself. And that's going to read the temperature outside and tell the heater exactly when to turn on and off. These cobalt neotherm heaters in particular are known for being very, very accurate at turning on at exactly the temperature you set every single time. So if that's important to you, you should definitely consider using a digital um, thermostat. One last note is a lot of titanium heaters or heaters using an external controller like this JVJ have a separate temperature probe. It's right here. 
So particularly if you leave your heater in the tank, what tends to happen sometimes is the water around the heater is hot, but the rest of the tank is not warm. And that can kind of mess up the heater because it's really only heating that water around the tank and not the whole tank. Now if you have your heater in a filtration compartment, in an all-in-one tank, or in a sump of water passing over it, it's not that big of an issue because the heat is continuously dispersed, but if it's sitting in the aquarium, it can be an issue. The JBJ heater and many other titanium heaters have a separate temperature probe. And the advantage of this is you can move this probe to another location in the tank. That way the heater is not reading the temperature around where it is, it's reading the temperature in the location that you're concerned about. And a lot of people believe this can give you even, even more accurate reading. Um, the JBJ also uses that digital thermostat. And one unique feature of this one is you can calibrate it. So for example, on that Awasa heater, I mentioned that you find that the heater is reading 78, but it's maintaining at 80. And that's kind of annoying. It works, but it's a little annoying. The JBJ heater, if you set the temperature at 80, find out it's actually 78. There's an adjustment knob in the back where you can use a little screwdriver to change it so the display will then read the correct temperature. It just makes things very convenient when it comes to setting the temperature in your tank. And if that's important to you, you should definitely consider a heater like this. The last thing that we're going to discuss is heater safety. As we've already alluded to, one of the key concerns when using a heater in your aquarium is a very large percentage of tank crashes and failures happen because of heater failures. Now there's a variety of different kinds of heater failures that happen. The one that's probably the most prominent is going to be the heater failing on. If the thermostat in the heater fails and the heater stays on, it will slowly raise your aquarium temperature. It can ultimately cook everything inside and kill the animals. So there's a variety of things we can do to prevent this. The first thing is using two heaters rather than a single heater. As you mentioned, this way if one of the heaters fails, it isn't putting the full heat of the heater into the aquarium. So it's going to raise the temperature much more slowly. This will let you know there's something wrong and have more time to react rather than if you had a huge heater that turned on, could heat things up really fast before you could do anything about it. The second thing is you only want to use your heaters when you have to. So if you're like us where you have a relatively warm summer, your heater probably isn't turning on in the summer. And because when the heater is on, there's a chance the heater could fail and you're putting wear and tear on the heater from having it turn on occasionally, it's best just to remove your heater during the summer. Once things start to get cool and you need the heater again, you can put it back into service. This way you're not putting as much wear and tear on that heater. It's going to last longer. You need more chance that it's going to perform like it's supposed to. The next thing we're going to mention is backing up a heater. So with any heater, all it takes for it to fail is that thermostat. If the thermostat fails, the heater turns on, ultimately result in some bad issues with your tank. Better than that is having two things that need to fail before your heater can cause a catastrophe. So one of our favorite products are products like this Auto Aqua Smart Temp Control. What this is going to do is it's going to have a probe that goes in your aquarium or aquarium sump and a socket. The socket will plug into a wall or a power strip and your heater is going to go into the socket. What this probe will do is measure the heat and with the probe ever senses that the temperature goes above a preset value of 83 degrees, it'll turn off the heater and also make an audible alarm to let you know something bad is happening. This is very, very important because even if the heater fails, your tank won't die. It'll heat up a little bit, it'll sh then shut the heater off, and the heater will not be heating anymore. Once you hear the alarm, you can know something happened, investigate the heater and fix it before your animals wind up getting cooked and, uh, and, cooked and killed. In addition to little plugs like this, you can also get a full aquarium controller such as a Neptune Apex, but it's going to be significantly more expensive, but you will also unlock many other features that the Apex has besides this. The last thing that we'll discuss as far as heater security is heaters are also known for breaking. In particular heaters that are glass, sometimes the top of the heater cap will separate from the body and that can lead to rust or other metals going into the tank. For many aquariums, this may be no big deal, particularly for reef aquariums or aquariums with invertebrates such as shrimp tanks, those metals can be very, very toxic. To avoid this, the first thing to consider is check your heaters regularly to make sure there's no damage, 
choose a more durable heater, you may want to go with a titanium heater over that glass that's less known for breaking. And the last thing to consider is that heaters really do have a lifespan. My general rule is I don't expect any heater to last more than twice whatever the warranty period says. The warranty is a good idea of what the manufacturer believes the heater should last, and they tend to last a little bit longer than that. But if you purchase a heater with a one-year warranty, it probably should be replaced after about three years. You purchase a heater like this Neotherm from Cobalt, has a um, longer warranty, three years, it may last five or six years, but at that point, I still consider replacing it because I don't want it to fail. And that kind of gives you a metric of how long the heater should last. If you look at that warranty period, it shows the manufacturer's confidence in the parts. If it's really short, you're probably going to want to replace that heater sooner. If it's longer, that means that heater is designed to last longer without parts breaking or failing. And because that failure can be so devastating, you want to stay on top of swapping it out once the heater gets old and has some wear on it. If you like this content or have any other questions related to aquarium keeping, please feel free to reach the videos and education section on the marineandreef.com website.